Friends, friends of financial freedom, welcome into Investors Club. Got a great show for you. We hear from an expert on bioanalytics who works in the field, biostatistics and analytics, about the process cassava sciences data is going through right now. And uh, so we get some insight about what's happening there, how long it takes, and when we can expect this stuff. So pretty cool stuff from the Investors Club Discord. We'll also take a look at uh, cassava sciences drug semifilam. The, its mechanism of action is working on filament A. Filament A was thought to be like a brick, uh, 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 there for structure. Is a protein there for uh, for uh, to what is the word? I'm missing a word for, for to provide structure, and it was inert. Otherwise, did not was not biologically active. They said, "No, wait a minute. This thing is a little bit biologically active." Then they said, "Wait a minute." It's a lot more than a little bit biologically active. It's it's very biologically active. This filament A stuff. It was there. They thought it was there to provide structure. It's very biologically active. They just there's a new study in Nature from the end of December, showing that filament A, a filament A receptor interaction, filament A and receptor interaction, uh, by blunting that interaction, you can uh, activate the guardian of uh, the the genome p53. It looks like. So this is how RAIN's drug works. RAIN is at 1278 now. We got behind it at 740, what, 12 days ago. It's up 74% for us right now. Uh, it looks like filament A, it looks like cassava sciences drug may have the same type of interaction. We know that cassava sciences has a cancer patent, at least one application. But you know, they have, they have some intellectual property around cancer. I forget what it is. Anyway, we'll take a look at that. We'll take a look at rain has just been on a reign of terror. We've got a new biotech we're going to send out tonight. Rain is our last picks up 74%. Fusion doubled for us. SCPH doubled for us. DRD doubled for us almost. Uh, sign up for the newsletter and get this next one. Get this next one. Get this next one. Galt, uh, Galt doubled for us. Get this next one, of course. Cassava Sciences 20 x for us. Or whatever it was from 6 to 149. Sign up for that news that we're sending that out tonight. Uh, what else we got? We got uh, biotech approval rates. We got a biotech approval rates. 76 people here. Good to see you guys. We have biotech approval rates across the different indications. Remember, we took a look at the different phases. We said in biotech, uh, phase one is, is relatively successful. Phase two is where they add efficacy. And that's the one that's tough. And then we, so we looked at approval rates by phase. Then we also said by drug class and by indication and by other things you can break down, there you're going to get different data, uh, different approval rates. And so we're going to look at approval rates by indication. Good stuff there. What else? Jay has been bugging us for Compass uh, updates. Compass, Compass, Compass. It's just Compass. I'm trying to, this is Compass. Pathways. There's not so it's Compass, it's Compass, Thera Compass Therapeutics, Compass Pharmaceuticals, it's just Compass Pathways. Compass is our pick, is our psychedelic pick. They do psilocybin to treat mental health. They were published uh, for treatment resistant depression in phase two. They're starting phase three in treatment resistant depression. We'll take a look at two more catalysts coming this year for their lead products. Uh, and they are up a, a bunch today. Not an investment advisor, not an investment advice, number one ranked stock analyst in the world. What we're doing here is the best research and analysis for you and me, the regular investor, because the financial media lies to us. It's controlled by the hedge funds and the special interests, and they don't have our best interest in mind. But that's okay. You know why that's okay? Because we have each other, we have Investors Club, and we're going to do a way better job than those bozos in the financial media ever could anyway. If you like that, please hit like. The algorithm likes like, and you are going to like liking like. And if you like liking like, you're going to love sharing this. Please share this on Twitter. Share this on LinkedIn. Share this however you share stuff on YouTube. <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, and, uh, and, and comment and chat. Thank you. All right. 85 people. Good to see you guys. Let's dive in. There is rain on a rain of terror on a reign of terror, 1280, uh, it, it topped out so far at 1284, but it just every day it keeps going up. When I wrote about this 12 days ago, it was at 740, and I said, I, I said, darn, because I had sat on it for like a week, 
I said, darn, it's up 15%. I'm getting it out now. It's up 15%. But I think it's, I think it looks good because it's got that Q1 catalyst and it looks like it's going to be approved. And, uh, and, and we said that the analysts had a low price target of 12 and a high of 30. We had a 16 X on it. And, uh, and it's, it's not, it's not literally not taking a break every day. It's been up, up to 13 now. So we're up over 75, up 1327, 1327, 1327. Let's do some math on that. 1327. We got behind this missing the first 15%. We got behind it at 740. And so it is up. 79% in less than two weeks, 79% less than two weeks since we got behind it. And I got another great one. I just can't wait. I want to, I want to, I want to ride this one, right? But I got another great one. I'm going to bring it to you tonight because I'm not sitting on it because <laughs> of what just happened when I sat on this one. So uh, sign up for the newsletter. I got another great stock coming this night, tonight, a multi-bagging, multi-bagging, big multi-bagging. This is one of those like SC pharmaceuticals, big 100X type of stock with a catalyst this year. All right, uh, so Rain Oncology up 12.75% because it just keeps on going. Compass is up 5.91%, good job. Let's get Rain back up there. Look at that, 13.30 it topped out at. DRD Gold, 862, it just doesn't stop. This is the one that is highly levered to the cost of gold, the price of gold. And as gold, if gold falls, it's really bad. They could, they could, they could have maybe even have to cut their dividend. But if gold rises, they can quickly make a lot of money. And gold's rising. And this thing is on its way to a double. It's up, I think it's up 65% before today. So up like 67% since we got behind it. Uh, and there is Cassava up more than 2%. Good job. Transmedics catching a bit up more than 2%. SC Pharma up about 2%. Life up almost 2%. All of those beating the, the, uh, all of those beating the leveraged funds because we didn't look around the broad market. The broad market has come in. It started off shooting up and now things are ever so slightly up. NASDAQ up 0.24%. S&P up 0.16%. Okay, let's get into the stories. Let's get into the stories. Uh, rain up 74%. Check that. Rain up 79% and counting. And counting. Uh, Sava like rain and then new biotech. Sign up for that newsletter. Sign up for that newsletter. Pays for itself more than 10 times over. If you would have had 10,000 bucks in rain, it would have put that news that would have paid for itself many times over, right? Or if you got a hundred hundred thousand bucks and it would have made a bunch of money. Sign up for the newsletter uh, or, or miss out or miss out. We will all uh, know what the next stock is before you and you can watch. And then we have this Sava like rain. So this is very interesting. I, got, I saw this on Power Gap on Power Gap. I saw this on stock twits uh, by the chap person named Power Gap, the non-binary birth, birthing person named Power Gap, who says, uh, check this out in heptocellular carcinoma. What is heptocellular carcinoma? It's a very terrible cancer. Even for cancer, it's terrible. The prognosis is really bad. For the 43% of people who are diagnosed with liver cancer at early stage, the five-year survival rate is 35%. If the cancer has spread to surrounding tissues or organs or the regional lymph nodes, the five-year survival rate is 12%. So that's really terrible. Uh, so this is the most common liver cancer. And then this is from Nature. This is just published December 28th, 2022 in Nature, Oncogenesis. Uh, Nature is, you know, the best publication really that there is. Uh, and so this is about blocking the interaction of a receptor, filament A receptor interaction, blocking that interaction for a therapeutic benefit, this in cancer. So they say... We identified the gene protein coupled lysophosphatic acid receptor 1, LPAR1, as a novel interaction partner of MRTFA and filament A. Hmm. Pharmacological blockade or depletion of LPAR1 prevents filament A phosphorylation, phosphorylation and complex formation with MRTFA resulting in reduced MRTF SRF target gene expression and 
Oncogene-induced senescence. Oncogene-induced senescence. Interesting. Hang on to that one. Thus, inhibition of the LPAR1 filament A MRTFA interaction represents a promising strategy for heptocellular carcinoma therapy. Okay, oncogene-induced senescence. What is that? Oncogene-induced senescence is a robust and sustained anti-proliferative response brought about by oncogenic signaling resulting from an activating mutation of an oncogene or the inactivation of a tumor suppressing gene. I know, I know that's, I know that's heavy, but as I'm reading that, I'm like, this sounds just like what rain does. I just covered rain and found out about this guardian of the genome P53. It, and it sounds just like what they're talking about here. Oncogene induced senescence is a robust and sustained anti-proliferative response brought about by oncogenic signaling resulting from an activating mutation or an oncogene or the inactivation of a tumor suppressor gene. So the, so the inactivation of a tumor suppressor gene. Tumor suppressor gene is P53 that suppresses the tumors and then, and then something inactive, things inactivate it. Rain has a drug that blocks that inactivator, mamatidine. So, so I looked up oncogene induced senescence. Does that, am I right, that does that involve P53? Let's check. Senescence induced in oncogene expressing cells is a P53 dependent tumor suppressor mechanism that prevents malignant transformation by suppressing cellular proliferation. So it looks like filament A is possible, it looks like it has uh, a way to reactivate the guardian of the genome. Very interesting. And so, and, and so just to, to remind us how Rain's drug works, that's miladadminin. I can't say this one very well. Miladminin, miladimitan, miladimitan, miladimitan. Miladimitan works by inhibiting a suppressor of P53. So P53 is the guardian of the genome. Something suppresses it and you get cancer. This shows up in most cancers, 50 to 60%. This is not to be understated. P53 mutations are the most common mutation in human cancers, and P53 is inhibited in 50 to 60% of all human tumors. In a disease as heterogeneous as cancer, cancer is a bunch of different types. It's all, it, there's, 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 not, there's seemingly not gonna be a ma magic bullet because it's so many different things, but then again, using, this, using the P53, in a disease as heterogeneous as cancer, this represents an enormous shot on goal. So, what we saw with RAIN is that it's only working in about 1%. The thing, that, the thing that's in, uh, inhibiting P53 uh, is only inhibiting P53 that, that, that miladimantin works on is only about 1% of the P53 inhibition. So fine, it'll work in 1% of cancers maybe. It seems like it will. Uh, but what if, what, if, what if filament A is a way to robustly reactivate P53? in many more than 1% of these cancers. Just saying, just saying. And that takes us to Saba data timing. Saba data timing. Deb, yes, we have girls in Investors Club, yes. Deb is a new member of Investors Club and she comes to us with a biostatistics, bioanalytics background. Deb talks to us about uh, the, the, Cassava's data timing. We're waiting on the open label timing data for the uh, 200 people in the open label one year study. Okay. Deb says, regarding time for outside data management companies, I work in the bioanalytical lab for years, years. Some trials are small and well controlled and the labs get samples at specific times. For example, shipments once a month, when you involve multiple trial sites, they may or may not use a central lab for consolidating those sending those samples. If they don't, each site has to store the samples per the lab manual and send the samples when they can, as per the manual. Sounds inefficient and time consuming. Keep in mind, bioanalytical labs only analyze samples for a drug in matrix, pharmacokinetic blood draws. She goes on. The CSF biomarkers go another place. 
the clinical blood chemistry samples go to the lab in the hospital for the cent or the central lab. Other samples go to the specialty labs for specific testing per the protocol. Can you say a lot of samples? The paperwork clinical report forms go to another company. Many are still paper. Some may be directly digital. Samples get lost, quote unquote, in the freezers, then miraculously turn up after all samples analysis had been completed and the report is in the draft stage. So time points can be missing. Patient samples can be misidentified. Was the plasma for PK or serum or IgG testing? So the trial management and data management pieces are huge. She goes on. Data then goes through a reconciliation process, meaning it gets cleaned before it can be analyzed. Any report is given about one month between analysis and draft report review by the sponsor. Sponsor comes back with comments, which gets rectified. Sometimes there are two to three rounds of report review prior to finalization. She goes on. So while it is annoying to my inner child self to wait for Saba to explode higher, I can talk myself down and say, all the evidence points to this being worth the wait and accrue a little more on the side when the price is low. Thank you so much, Deb. Thank you for joining Investors Club. Deb got rewarded by getting uh, rain a little bit early, getting rain. I think, I think she, she thinks you joined in time for rain. And then this is from, uh, this is from a presentation from somebody named Keen. This is going in the, this, this came across as I'm doing the biotech class. You, I'll, I'll tell you to sign up for that class, but it's not ready yet. It's, that class is going to take me most of this month. As I'm when I write articles, when, I, when I've written every article, I told you I always learn as I write. It's like okay, I've, I've, I know I have some, now I have something to say. Time to write it, but it doesn't matter if you learned enough to have something to say. You always learn a ton when you write. So as I'm putting this class together, and I put other classes together too. And as I put the class together, you always learn more. As I'm putting this class together, it's just getting bigger. That's what happens when I write these articles. It's like, ah, it just get, for a while, it just keeps getting bigger, and the deadline just keeps, so this class keeps getting bigger. Anyway, that, that's where this is coming from. So I'll give you an update on, hopefully, this will, uh, I hope, hope to roll it out at uh, the beginning of February now, that class. Okay. Uh, here is a likelihood of approval in the different indications. We said... Uh, the, we, we looked at different phases and their general likelihood of approval, but then we also said if different drug classes have different likelihoods, different indications have different likelihoods. Let's look at indications. So uh, the, uh, the greenish tan line is phase two. We know that's the first time efficacy is introduced. So that one has the lowest uh, uh, success rates. And so you can see the success rates in phase two they, they go between 20 and 40%. Other, I'm sorry, I forgot what, what other entails. It was like a hodgepodge of stuff. Sorry, what's up? But uh, infectious disease was high. Autoimmune, relatively high. Endocrine, they're all, there's not a whole lot of separation. Infectious disease was 46%. Other was 44. Everything else was between 26 and 34. So about a third of phase two, and it's pretty consistent across the indications. Uh, and then phase three is in the red. And then oncology is really uh, is really the, the only one below really the only one below fifty percent. So in phase three, oncology falls below fifty percent. They had twenty eight percent in phase two, which was tied with respiratory and better than uh, cardiovascular. But then they're the worst in phase three uh, at forty five percent. And then we can see the overall likelihood of approval is the black line, and it's oncology at seven percent. Cardiovascular at 7%. Cardiovascular, if you get cancer, it's sort of a somewhat of a sort of fast happening event. Uh, cardiovascular stuff takes like decades to happen. And so these trials are so hard to prove benefit or not benefit. And uh, so anyway, cardiovascular drugs have had a tough, tough time. There's neurology. We know how tough that's been. Uh, they're only a little bit better than cardiovascular at 7%. Uh, 7% cardi neurology is at 9%. So, and then, and then I should have said this from the beginning, all diseases, their overall is 10%. And for phase two, all diseases, like we saw, it was 32%. And overall, like we saw for phase three, it's 60%. That's what we saw before, an overall 10%. Okay, interesting stuff. But so neurology, oncology, these are tough ones. When you get them right, though, that's why they got the big payoffs when you get them right. Okie dokie. And then here is, uh, actually, we'll do that another time. That is it. Oh, no, that's not it. That's not it. Jay has been bugging us for compass. All right, sir. 
course, I lost my place now because I was looking for the name of the company. Compass Pathways. This is so cool. This is a, a, a this is brain connections. Let's see what they say. Simple simplified visualization of the acute changes in brain network connectivity. And so, a figure adapted from this study analyzed functional magnetic renaissance imaging data from healthy volunteers to compare resting state functional brain connectivity after intravenous infusion of placebo and psilocybin. So look at the functional magnetic re renaissance imaging showing brain network connectivity. When you're the, following psilocybin, look at all the connections being made. No wonder people are able to, to understand things and deal with things. So very interesting. Uh, and then here we have, okay, so here we have the upcoming catalyst. So they did, so they did uh, treatment resistant depression was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, very uh, esteemed, prestigious journal. So they, they, they did very well, they're, 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 their stuff's looking good. I don't know if they did very well, but they did, they did well in treatment resistant depression. Treatment resistant depression is depression that has failed more than two lines of treatment. And then this year, they have anorexia and post-traumatic stress disorder, both uh, generating data by the end of the year. And then also they've started phase three or will start phase three soon in treatment-resistant depression. Already that's Compass. That is the stories. With that, my investing friends, let's go to the telephones. Pale says, hello, Joe, happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, Pale, good to see you, my friend. JC says, hi, Joe, good morning. Good morning, JC, good to see you, my friend. Jaker from the Investors Club Discord, coming, for t coming at us from the, J J from the Investors Club Discord says, Joe, did you say rain is filament A related? Well, uh, more like semifilam is P53 related, possibly. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, my friend. What is the difference between two phase three trials? Is it only number of patients and length of the study? Uh, and then also one has three arms. So one is shorter and smaller, 750. So this is cassava sciences is right now in the middle of two phase three. And, th and that is the gold standard for phase three. The gold standard is two large trials, placebo controlled trials, two large lengthy placebo controlled trials. And if you show uh, if you show in those two studies, uh, your prime, whatever your primary endpoint is, if you should prove, uh, you can't, you can never really prove something works. You can, what you can do is prove that uh, things are not the case. You can never really prove something is the case in science, but you can eliminate possibilities and prove something cannot be the case. Anyway, so if you quote unquote prove that it works in those two large studies, that's the gold standard, then you get approval. Okay, so there are two large studies. As rain breaks through to 1347, we're going to get a double just here today. Uh, as... 1354, uh, so Cassava has Rethink and Refocus. I, I don't know which one's which, uh, but one of them has 750 people and is uh, one year long, 12 months, and has two arms, placebo and drug. And then the other is 18 months. It has three arms, placebo, drug, drug. So uh, patients that go into that study have a better chance of getting the drug. However, patients that go to the shorter study uh, get to the uh, open label afterward that everyone is offered and get the drug that way. So either way, pretty good, pretty good things for the, for the patients. Uh, so anyway, the, the, there's three arms in the longer study. It's longer and larger and three arms. Uh, the two drug arms, two different doses. I think 50 and 100. I think they're going with 100, but I think they're trying 50 again. This is for Sava. I guessed my friend, but thank you for that. Bill in Texas. Thanks for your efforts, Joe. Very welcome, my friend. After approval, we should all meet in Austin. I agree. I, I love Austin. I used to live in Austin. We should all meet in Austin. Roberto, January 23rd is court decision. What do you think about it, good or bad? Good. And just because, I, I mean, I think that there was never anything there in the first place. And then, yeah, but are the evil forces going to win out? Yeah, big Pharma... Big Pharma may want Cassava to, to stumble here, but it's not Big Pharma suing them. I don't think Big Pharma has their claws in this, in that judge, I don't think. I think Cassava wins. Sava is waiting for the court decision, so after 23rd, when will they release Open Label? What do you, they release? I don't think they'll sit on it. People keep saying that, maybe so. You broke 100 live chat participants, 124. 
Hey, thank you guys for being here. Good to see you guys. Broke, yeah. That, so we, we are getting better and better. It, it's and the way, then I'll get I'll get the new the new uh, the new studio here. Things are getting better and better. I'm learning how to uh, how to do the social media a little bit better. So things are things are going. Thanks guys for being here. Thanks for all your help. Yeah, things are getting better and better. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Cheers. Cheers, Mark. Thank you, my friend. People keep saying uh, open label uh, after. Are they going to hold on to the data? I don't think they'll hold on to it. Uh, maybe they will, but it's. Uh, it's material, so if they hold on to it and it leaks, then then you know they could be liable. They could be back in court for that. <laughs> so I, I think they'll just release it. Chris, hi Joe. Do you think Saba's pre-trial conference in New York is a catalyst for the stock? Eleven thirty. Uh, I didn't know such. I didn't know that. Sure, <laughs> I didn't know that, my friend. Is that that's today? I didn't know that. Joyce, love the Discord group as Yahoo and StockTwits have become a cesspool of FUD. Yahoo is owned by what, uh, Susquehanna, Apollo, Apollo. Uh, so they're shorts. Own, the Yahoo message board is owned by the shorts. And so they, they censor. Seeking Alpha was started by David Jackson, a short hedge fund manager. So, a short hedge fund manager. So they censor. Uh, John Henry started Stat, a short hedge fund manager. So they, they just do FUD at Stat. That's where Adam Furstein. Uh, Adam Firstine's old employer, Jim Kramer, short hedge fund manager, started the street. All they did was FUD. They didn't give you a chance. On, on the street and stat, they don't give you a chance to say anything, so they don't censor. They just do FUD. <laughs> uh, but in Seeking Alpha Yahoo message boards, they censor the comments uh, and do FUD. And uh, did you see uh, Citadel's building a tower in Manhattan? They're leaving Chicago because of the crime and going to New York. <laughs> <laughs> and building a tower there. I mean, they have so much money and, and they're so criminal. Uh, I mean, they just, they just, they, they, they make, they, they dominate the financial media. All the, the, they, they do. We need just, I mean, the, the media works for the corporations, the criminal, basically the criminal corporations now. Uh, and we need our small uh, micro communities. Uh, we need them now. So thank goodness for Discord. I'm so glad you're here, Joyce. I can't, couldn't agree with you more. JC, as far as you know, is the court required to come to a decision by 23rd or can they sit on it for a bit longer? There, it, it is currently the date. I don't know, I don't know the procedure enough to, to know if there could be something else. I guess there could be something else, but that, the, those, those dates are pretty, like if, if you or I miss a court date, they, they probably take it pretty seriously. I, I guess they take it seriously if, if they miss it themselves. Pale, C, Deb has sense. Take advantage of stock prices when they are irrationally low to buy more. Stock seems to be the only thing people who want more of them get angry with when prices go down. I know, that's, that's like what Buffett said and like what, uh, what Benjamin Graham said uh, is that uh, yeah, things go on sale and people don't buy, they get upset. Like, what? <laughs> Tom Liu, hi, Joe. I was in shock FDA approved Biogen's drug. Sava can prove its drug far superior than Biogen. Heck yes, way better. John Curley, I'm with Bill. Meet up after approval, only let's go to Jupiter. You can invite yourself here, I see. <laughs> Pale, the only time you should want high stock prices if you want to sell soon. As rain goes to $13.79, we're going to get a double. So, so when I got behind, it was 740. So 1480 is a double. And I missed the first 15% because I sat on it. We would already have a double in less than two weeks. 1381. Woo. Uh, the only time you should want high prices to sell, sell soon. If you're going to long-term investor, why would you even think of selling before approval? I know. Absolutely. My sister is a doctor and talked MD and talked about the alternative of cure drug Alzheimer's. I told her Sava. She said, where? I, I should hold my breath until Sava releases its report. Yeah, uh, show her that when it comes out. Show her the new data, the open label when it comes out. And please tell us what she says. Pale, stock twits is good for netlist, but of course they will always be FUD trolls. This is the internet. However, one should consider other views if they are backed up with reason and data. Yep. Yeah, like stock twits, I still go there to promote this show. And uh, if, 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 uh, if I'm trying to figure out what's going on with a stock and I can't find, and, I, and it's not that there's the company doesn't have like a, a filing or a press release and no one in the, in the Discord or whatever, yeah, I'll go to uh, stock twits or wherever, Twitter, Seeking Alpha, wherever. Even though I don't, even though I, some of those places are in with the shorts. 
Ryan, hi Joe, Yahoo. Hi Joe, could you look at Glick maybe promising? Uh, I, I'll take a look another time, my friend. Uh, got a lot, just got a lot going on right now. I got I to, gotta, this show's already more than half an hour. I got to get that report out this evening on the, on the next one. I uh, got a lot, and working, working a lot of stuff right now. I'll take a look at Glick. Thank you for that. I think someone in the Discord brought, brought I think I have looked at that. Uh, it's dry here in Oklahoma. Thanks for the rain, Joe. Needed the rain. Interesting. Yeah, we got to play. It's such a fun, such a fun ticker too. I mean, such a, <laughs> you can, you can play with rain all day long. Don't mean to rain on your parade. Pale thumbs up for Saba data insights. Yes. What about no one thought thumbs up for the cancer insights? I thought that was great. Jake, hoping the upcoming Sava catalysts are enough to ramp up phase three enrollment into the 125, 150 per month range. Yeah, we, we could still see uh, more. Uh, as they open all their, their sites, you get to a peak enrollment. We we're either there or almost there. But yeah, we could still see them uh, ramp up a little bit more. And as Jake is saying, if we get some good press, which we won't, <laughs> which we won't, but it was some good press, sure would help. Pale, hopefully we have a great court decision, yep, and great data, yep, that will come out close to each other in time, yep. Always good to see you, Joe Loked, Quezzy, my uh, terrific Loking friend, great to see you, my friend. Thanks for being here, as always. Great to see you, always happy to see you. Pale, how do you see how many live chat participants there are? I am using Ecamm in addition to using Restream, and I'm streaming on LinkedIn, YouTube, and Twitter. And on Restream, it tells me I got a little eyeball and it says 125. So I got 125. Afzal, my opinion, Saba increased patients on CMS study to 125. Well, that's why I have a, they, 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 I, if I get more viewers, they can have more people in the study uh, so that they can report six month interim data from phase three rethink trial. CMS study may show prolonged effects of semifilam, so results may be skewed. Sorry, let me read that again. So, Saba increased patients on CMS so they can report six-month interim data from phase three. Interesting. So you think the CMS, the CMS was originally supposed to be 100. They increased it to 125. One th that may just be a function of that was the number of responders. They were hoping to get 50% responders and they got more than 50%, maybe. Uh, but you're thinking that they they increased it so that it could be a more highly powered study, so that it could then prompt them to do take an early look at six month data for the phase threes. Remember, the nepazil. If you we, we we looked at its NDA, its new drug application, and it was approved before these monoclonal antibody craps were approved. It was the last drug approved in 2003, 20 years ago. And it was approved on only six-month efficacy data. It had, I think, some longer safety data, but only six-month efficacy data, six months of data. So those trials, it's, that's plenty good. In the 2013 Alzheimer's Act should lower the bar for approval. So if anything, it should be easier now. And uh, so, and so to, to keep people on placebo, if all you need is six months, to keep people on placebo is, is not ethical, and then you go to compassionate use at that point. There's a terrific argument to do a six-month look-in and move placebo patients to compassionate use if the data is strong, and, and go to approval right there. That's what, that, that's what I've been arguing. I've also been arguing BTD off of cognition maintenance study and then NDA off of that, approval off of that. So, But I, I like it off, so thank you. Good morning, Joe. Happy Tuesday. Thank you for the great info as always. Ishmael, my friend, great to see you. Uh, my pleasure, my friend. Afzal, I expect stupendous, love the word, six million inter, uh, six month interim results from Rethink could report in Q3. Enrollment of 750 should be done by March or April. This would be the biggest price catalyst and takes Sava to $20, million, $20 billion market cap. That $20 billion market cap is has so much backing from Biogen and Lilly. We've seen it repeatedly in those. They've done, each of them has done at least one. Biogen, Lilly did multiple, and I think Biogen did too. I think they've each moved $20 billion multiple times on, on lousy, crappy, monoclonal antibody Alzheimer's data. No question about it. 1434 for rain. 
that we're like, what a four, we need fourteen eighty to get an official double in less than two weeks. Fourteen thirty four. We're almost there. Uh, that Afzal, I love it. Six month interim results. So I, I wasn't even thinking. I was thinking CMS and NDA get us to market this year. And then as soon as as soon as this thing looks like it's going to market, twenty billion. And Lily did twenty billion, and then twenty billion again the next day. So forty billion. I, I mean, and I mean, I really there's we're, there we got to at some point the market market's got to snap to it. So I, I love it. I love it. Eside launched the Le- Lakembi at yearly price of twenty six thousand five hundred. I've modeled twenty. I've modeled sixteen thousand for uh, Samifalam, and, and with inflation and whatnot, we could possibly argue twenty sixteen gets us <laughs> sixteen gets us to like a hundred billion in valuation and upwards. So that's plenty. Eside launched Lakembi at yearly price of twenty six five hundred. This is wholesale acquisition price. There will be discounts and rebates. Effective price could be 20K. Yep. If a stock price goes down, that means you get to own a larger part of the company for the same money when the price was higher. Why wouldn't you want more of, why would you want more own more rather than less of a good company? Good point. Ryan, thanks again, Joe. Well, if you're going to be that nice, look at Glick, if you're going to be that nice, gosh darn it. <laughs> Great show, Joe, says RJ, enjoying the Discord. What's your price target for Saba six to nine months? Getting the twenty billion in valuation, I mean that's almost a twenty x from here. It's like a fifteen x from here. Market cap is one point two three, so it's like a fifteen x from here. So we're talking about five hundred. It's five hundred bucks. Ten billion, twenty billion, twenty billion in valuation, five hundred bucks. I don't know, man. At some point, at some point, the the it's got a the Lily Biogen they were getting twenty billion on their crappy data on their crappy data. This is good data, so I think they get it. I, I don't think it's going to happen all at once. I think when it becomes obvious, we're going to get what's happening with rain, and it's just going to just march, 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 and then all of a sudden, five hundred is not going to look ridiculous. Saba could easily launch at thirty five thousand uh, cost. If you look at the potential benefit, you could charge thirty-five thousand for semiflim. I say charge half that, and you can still get way just ridiculous numbers. Cancer insights are very interesting, Joe. Thank you, Pale. I am just paying attention to a few stocks until the bear is over. Uh, BJ Saba had a great product, but management is made over promises and under deliveries. As simple as results from third-party team told market end of December. They must have had at least the end of January. They must have said at least end of January. In retrospect, it's hard to argue. Bill, did you see Forbes listed Saba as his top favorite biotech bet for 2023? Yes. Didn't have time to include it. That was Cotton. We had covered him before, Joe Cotton, and good on him for uh, covering it. And then that is totally awesome. And then and in Forbes, I think last time we covered Joe Cotton covering Saba was in a different publication. Making it to Forbes is, is pretty good. Uh, so yeah, good to see. I didn't have time to fit it in. Steve, hey Joe, good to see you. Steve Martin, good to see you, my friend. What is the date for Rain's approval decision? I don't know. It's it's Padufa date. It's this quarter, uh, or maybe they're submitting NDA this quarter. It's 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 this quarter. Frankly, I'm not sure. <laughs> Afzal, I mean, phase three six month interim data could be reported before CMS data. That's interesting. I hadn't thought about that. That is so interesting. That's the biggest. That's the biggest thing. I, I, biggest potential piece of news we've had in a while. I think that's very interesting. I hadn't. I, we originally like we wrote about that in, on, in seeking alpha more than a year ago. But why there should be a six month look in on these trials? But I'd basically given up. <laughs> very interesting. You, you think the 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 well then? How does the CMS expanding? Uh, lead to them looking in early. I hope they look in early. They should look in early. I don't know. James, I looked at TMDI. You you said TMDI, so I looked at it. And they had just run... So this is Titan Medical, their robotic surgery. I thought it was interesting. And I almost wrote about it. They had run like 50% since like the middle of December. It's like, what happened in the middle of December? Well, they released a filing that said that they basically said they were putting themselves up for sale. They said they had hired 
some investment bank, I forget who it was, Jeffries, I guess, somebody, I don't know, Jeffries, and said, you know, put us up for sale or help us sell parts of the business or help us, help us monetize. And, uh, and so they ran like 50% from there. And then they're going to the JP Morgan Healthcare Conference this week and they put on their LinkedIn, they put on their LinkedIn, they put on their LinkedIn that they were going to tuck in something to their suitcase on their way to the JP Morgan Healthcare Conference. It's one of the things we're tucking in, you know, a tuck in acquisition. So they, they put the word tuck in in this random post on LinkedIn and uh, deleted everybody that uh, all the, they censored all the comments that bashed them for it. So uh, they've been running. So, but the other thing about them is they're running out of money. So is, are they going to get acquired? Or was this bluster to raise their price so they can raise some cash? So I was, I was, I, I was, I, I haven't written about them. So I'm still very, I mean, they've already, if they're up 30% now that they've doubled since their filing. But we'll see, are they actually going to get acquired? Are they actually going to have an event? Or was this bluster to get their price up to raise money? Or both. Both. That's my guess is both. I think they raise money and eventually have some events. We'll see. Jay. Hi, Joe. Speaking of good press, see Forbes article from yesterday, six favorite biotech bets for 2023. Yes, uh, with Mr. Cotton. Thank you, Jay. Johnny English, been a while. Hi, Joe. Keep up the great work finding amazing stocks. Thank you, my friend. I really appreciate it. Sure will. As 1440 is the new high for rain. Rain rain's supposed to fall down, not, not fall up, right? Rain falls up now, apparently. Jack M, just to take the other side of Pale's argument, some investors may be maxed out. Can't buy more at the position size has reached the risk management limit. That's true. Pale, didn't David Brett sign an NDA to see Sava drug data and then try to copy it as his own? What was the full story behind that again? 2017, I believe, they said to Brett, hey, take a look at what we got here. Maybe you want to join us sign this dealio, non-disclosure, whatever. And uh, from what I understand, he said, uh, that's interesting, and left and then patented everything as near to it as he could, started Protego, uh, and then did the, uh, eventually did the citizen's petition to sabotage. <laughs> Seems like quite a guy. I'm glad they're suing him from defamation. I don't like him. <laughs> We need to bring the Sava story to Russell Brand. I love Russell Brand. Speaking of people I love, love Russell Brand. He is uh, fighting the system. I don't know if we're going to get his attention. That would be totally, he, he's not, he's the mainstream media. We can't get their attention because they want to destroy good things. Russell Brand, we could, if, he, if we got his attention, he would. He would totally, like what, what is happening with the FDA and the regulatory agencies and how big pharma owns these agencies and, and crushes innovation, he would definitely uh, be a huge, he would, he would love to hear about it. You're right. I shouldn't have dismissed it. You're right. We should try to get his attention. Instead of, instead of at Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan doesn't look at social media. I don't know if Russell Brand does, but we should try, we should go after Russell Brand. That's a good one. Jake, Russell Brand, I like it. Afzal, Remy has over-promised and under-delivered on data timeline. Yes, he has but mitigating circumstances as well. JC, I would think that if the court decision and data are positive, the enrollment would pick up significantly and they should reach 1750 patients fairly quickly. The share price will really take off. I hope so. The court decision, the thing is we're not going to get media help. Even, even every catalyst that's positive gets covered negatively by the media. It's <laughs> so... All right, 126 people. Great to see you guys. I uh, hate, to, hate to hang up the phone, but... Uh, of so many people, but uh, great to see you guys join the newsletter. Going to go get going on the next stock right now and send it out. Uh, if you missed this one, sign up for goodness sake. What are you waiting for? You get 24 stocks a year, best stocks in the market. All right, I'll see you guys in the Discord. See you in the Discord.